Welcome to Lyons Township High School AP Physics. Uh, today uh, we got a, a two-part problem. Uh, we're going to have a, a meter stick pivoted about one-third from its end, so about the 66.7 centimeter mark, and we're going to let it go like this. And we're going to ask some questions about that motion. Uh, the first questions are, the first three kind of go together. At the moment of release, what is the angular acceleration of the rod? What is the uh, tangential acceleration of the tip of the rod there? And also the center of mass of the rod here. Okay, so all parts of the rod are going to have the same angular acceleration because they're all stuck together. But different parts of the rod will have different tangential accelerations. We're going to find those. Part two of the problem is we're going to determine as it swings through its lowest point right here, what is the angular velocity of the rod, and also what are the tangential velocities of both the tip and the center of mass of the rod. Okay, So it's a two-part problem, and they're, and they're quite different problems, and I'll kind of explain when we transition from one to the other what makes them so different. So it's a pretty simple uh, picture. You've got a, a, a meter stick, and you have it pivoted one-third the distance from its end. Um, and uh, for, for all this, we're going to do everything in variable form. We're not going to put any numbers in. Okay. So the, the first half, we're going to find uh, the angular acceleration of the rod at that moment, and also the, the tangential acceleration. So uh, the first step would be to draw an FBD. Well, this one's really simple. You're going to have force of gravity acting at the center of mass of the rod, which is about here. That's mg. And then you're going to have the pivot. So if you don't put any force on the pivot, the meter stick will just drop. Well, that's no fun. So you, you, it turns out that your fingers have to pull up a little bit to keep the rod, this part of the rod, still. Okay? So there's going to be some force there. You could call it a tension force, or even if it's an actual pin there, it would technically be a normal force. Um, I'll call it FP for pin. Okay? All right. So um, I can pick any point I want to do a net torque. So um, I'm going to find the net torque about the axis. So I'll put a little x there. And if I do that, the pin force doesn't cause any torque. Its line of force goes through the axis of rotation, meaning it's got a zero lever arm. It's not going to cause any torque. So the only thing causing torque is this. So if we do net torque equals I alpha, OK, well, the only force causing torque is mg. Now you got to do torque is r cross f. Well, what's r? Well, if this is a third L, from here to here, that's the center of mass. It has to be half of L. So here's some math for you. What's a half minus a third? Well, it turns out it's a sixth. And I'll mark that up here. So this distance here is one sixth of L. That's your perpendicular lever arm. So net torque R would be L over 6 times mg equals I. Now, if you are in, at LT and you're in AP Physics 1, the moment of inertia of the rod would be given. Um, now, some common values, center of mass moment of inertia is a 12th ml squared. If you're pivoted at the end, it's a third ml squared. We're somewhere in between. It turns out if you do the math, uh, you end up with a ninth ml squared. So the moment of inertia of this meter stick about that pivot is a ninth ml squared. If you're in physics C, um, you would be expected to calculate that or get the expression for that. But anyway, for us, we've got one ninth ml squared. So that is something that would be given to you in the problem. Okay? And then we're trying to find alpha. Uh, you'll notice a lot of things cancel here, which makes it kind of nice. Uh, one of the L's drops out. Uh, the mass drops out, so it doesn't matter if the meter stick's made of wood or metal. It's going to have the same angular acceleration. Um, and if you solve for alpha, you get uh, the 9 comes over there. You get 9 over 6, which reduces down to 3 halves. You get a G in the numerator, and you'll have an L in the denominator. So you get 3G over 2L. So that is alpha at the moment you let the rod go. Okay? Now, um, a slightly more complicated problem, which we're not going to do right now, but a, a slightly more complicated problem is, when this thing is at an angle, what's the angular acceleration? Well, it turns out that varies with angle. For instance, when the rod swings through the very bottom of, of uh, its arc, it stops accelerating. It's, it's got its max 
angular velocity at that point. So there, alpha is 0. Here, alpha is your 3g over 2l. Here, alpha is 0. At different angles in between, you get different values in between. Okay? Uh, to find the velocity of the different parts of the rod, so first we're going to find the velocity, or the, I'm sorry, to find the accelerations of different parts of the rod, the linear accelerations, well, that's pretty simple. Acceleration, tangential, is simply equal to r alpha. Okay? So uh, for the tip of the rod, um, a sub t is equal to r. From here to here would be 2 thirds l. So you got 2 thirds l. And then alpha is what we just got, 3g over 2l. Now notice the l's drop out, and the 2's even cancel out. Um, and so are the 3's. What are you left with? g. OK, so for this example, the acceleration of that spot right there will be 9.8. It'll be g, down. Okay. For the center of mass of the rod, it's the same equation. The only thing that changes is r. Now you want this distance from the pivot to the center of mass, which is 1 sixth l. So you get a sub t is l over 6 times your 3g over 2l. And that reduces down to a quarter g. Okay, so the acceleration there downward would be 2.45 meters per second. Per second. All right, so um, that's how you do the accelerations of different parts of the meter stick. Now, for the second half of this problem, um, as the meter stick swings, it turns out that alpha changes. Okay, so alpha is not constant. Okay, so you can't use your your constant alpha kinematic equations. For instance, you cannot use omega final squared equals omega naught squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. Now, that'd be cool if you could. Okay, if you could do that, you know omega naught 0 is not moving to begin with. You're trying to find omega final. Uh, alpha, if, if alpha were constant, it would be this. Okay. And then your delta theta, where you're going 90 degrees, which is uh, pi over 2 radians. You plug that in, you get an answer. That won't work, though. It won't give you the right answer because, oh well, this changes as this thing swings. So you can't do that. Now, if you know calculus, it turns out there is a way to do that. Uh, but that's a little beyond what we're going to do. So the other way to do this is you have an object going from one point to another. Usually, when you have an object moving from one point to another, you can use conservation of energy. So that's what we're going to use for part two of this problem to find these last three values. Okay? Um, as a matter of fact, it won't even take that much room, I don't think. I think we might be able to fit it all right in here. Okay? So um, your conservation of energy equation is as follows. Uh, kinetic energy at the beginning plus potential energy at the beginning plus any work done by non-conservative forces equals kinetic energy at the end plus potential energy at the end. Okay. So first of all, the rod starts off at stationary. It's not moving to begin with, so that's zero. So that's gone. The only non-conservative force acting on this rod is FP. But FP is not doing any work. It's not acting through any distance. So the work done by non-conservative forces is zero. And um, we're going to say that the rod starts with potential energy. And when it swings through its lowest point, it's lost all that potential energy. And that's all kinetic energy. So we're going to say u final. Oh, that should be a final there. Sorry about that. u final is going to be 0. So you get a real simple equation here. You got mgh equals, now for rotational kinetic energy, it's 1 half i omega squared. Uh, now, in the previous part of this problem, I told you i was 1 ninth ml squared for this meter stick. Now, again, in physics 1, you're going to be given that. Okay. The hard part of this is, what is h? Okay, so what you have to do is imagine when the rod has swung and now it's vertical. Okay, H in this problem is how far the center of mass has dropped. In all these problems, when you do MGH, H is the height of the center of mass. So having said that, here is our center of mass before. Here it is now. How far did it drop? Well, it simply dropped 1 sixth 
L or L over 6. Okay, so our height in this problem is simply L over 6. And so we've got everything we need here. Um, mg times L over 6 equals 1 half, again, I would be given to you, which in this case is 1 ninth ML squared, and then you're trying to find omega. Now, again, a bunch of things cancels. For instance, the mass cancels. That's kind of nice. One of the L's drops out. There's one of the L's. You still got one L left there. Um, the 2 and the, th and the 6 can cancel. That gives you a 1. That gives you a 3. And the 3 and the 9 can cancel. That gives you 1. That gives you a 3. So you got a G over here left. You got a 3 left there. And you got an L left there. So omega would be the square root of, and with 3 in the numerator, 3G over L. All right. The beauty of algebra, right? Uh, so there's your omega final. And for instance, if L was 1 meter, it would be square root of 29.4, 29 uh, 29 okay? Uh, whatever that gives you. All right, so that's your omega final, okay? Now for these two, I will probably move the board up just slightly. How do you, from angular velocity, now remember, the entire meter stick has the same angular velocity. All parts of the meter stick are moving together, but they have different tangential velocities, okay? So what is the tangential velocity of the tip of the meter stick, okay? Well, similar to over here, we did AT is R alpha, VT is simply equal to R omega, okay? And again, what's radius? Well, from the pivot to the tip, it's 2 thirds L. So all you do is take this times 2 thirds L. So you got 2 thirds L, I'll write it like that, times root 3G over L. Now you could leave it like that. Um, I personally like to simplify stuff down. So if, if I put this L in there, it becomes an L squared. Okay, and then you got an L squared over L, so you're going to have an L in your numerator. If I put the 3 in there, that becomes a 9. And you got a 3 over 9, you get a 3 down here. You still have your G hanging out here. And then if I put the 2 in here, 2 squared is 4, um, we got rid of that 3. So that is your tangential velocity of the tip of the meter stick when the meter stick is vertical. Okay? And then you do the same exact process for the velocity of the center of mass of the meter stick. The only difference is what's r. Well, instead of 2 thirds L, it's uh, 1 sixth L. Okay, how far is it from here to here? Well, that's 1 sixth, okay. So I'll do that right below there. So VT in that case would be L over 6 times root 3G over L. And again, if you do the, tidy this up a little bit, you put that into here, it becomes an L squared. They cancel out, and you got one L left. So you got a G up there, you got an L up there. Um, six, you put it in there, it becomes 36. Three over 36 is one over 12. So you get three G over, or GL root, GL over 12. So that's your tangential velocity of the center of mass of the meter stick, um, which should be a quarter of that, okay? Um, so, uh, we did a couple things here. We used net torque equals I alpha to find alpha and then some tangential accelerations. And then we used conservation of energy to find the, the angular and some linear velocities of the meter stick at the bottom of its swing. Um, so I, I hope that that was helpful and uh, thank you very much.